Wakey, wakey, you horny sleepyhead. What? What the hell? Who are you? I'm Puppet Palco. I'm an alternate variant of you. Bro, it's 4 a.m. Why you woke me up? I have a video proposal for you. I couldn't have this waited? Nope, I want this idea done right now, and I know this is an offer you can't refuse. Because I put a cursed tattoo on you that won't be dispelled. The, what the fuck? Bro! Why? I have a job tomorrow! Then you better do the team I want then. Art, fine. W what's your team then? Succubuses. Succubi? Succubus! Howdy, your favorite succubus loving uncle back at it again, and welcome to another episode of Cole's Culture Corner. From this video forward, I'm going to cover several games that have specific themes, and for the theme of this video, Succubus Air Gaze. Specifically, the Succubus series published by Critical Bliss and developed by Libra Heart and Pixel Teishoku. So it's time for you and Uncle Ko to explore these succulent games. See what I did there? Huh? Huh? Succulent? Huh? <laughs> Ah, the succubus, originating from the Jews. These fantasy creatures have been the subject of many erotic media, from western to eastern, all across the globe. These little semen demons are like traitors. In exchange for your life essence, they give you a really, really good time in bed. You can at least pass on the afterlife and say to God with a straight face, I have no regrets. But I do guess, like other me said before, I'm covering the ones published by Critical Bliss and developed by Libra Heart and Pixel Teishoku. The first two games are classic Zelda-like games and the latter will be Metrovania games. If you guys enjoy Zelda or Castlevania with a little bit of erotic pixel art, then maybe you would enjoy these games whether you're looking for a fun time or a fun time. First up, we have the Sword and Tower of Succubus, which is three games in one type of deal. Let's go with Tower of Succubus first. Tower of Succubus is a game where you climb a 77 floor tower. You play as Lucia the Succubus who got her power and womb tattoo stolen by a wrinkly old man. To get your sucking powers back, you must traverse to the top of the tower and beat the 6 Power Ranger Succubus and their mommy queen. The gameplay is simple and classic. You get your melee attack with kicking and later on stabbing, and magic that uses your magic gauge, although you can still use magic even if it's empty, although it will deal less damage. How do you get your mana back, you ask? Well, that's simple, my dear friend, by sucking it out of your enemies. And how do you do that? By the act of fornication, obviously. You can charm pretty much any enemy that has a palace, sorry my skeleton friends, to trigger an erotic scene. After your intercourse with them, you gain back your mana and get a magic power off. This ranges from rapid and piercing, the uh, different kind of piercing. The level design is pretty straightforward and retro like something out of the Super Nintendo. It can be rough at some areas but overall it captures the classic retro era kind of vibes. And they also have fun puzzles that my big brain couldn't handle no sweat. Each one or three levels has secrets and powers that you can find and by god you will need every little power ups you need for these bosses. And of course you can collect these short story dojinshis which has beautiful erotic pixel art and some of these dojinshis also leads you to other secrets. You also get doubles and exp by murderizing enemies. Sadly, killing them by your suck powers does not give you EXP, which I guess balances it out since the sucks heals you and one shots enemy. I only realized it after I got through like half the tower and soon after I found out the pain of not leveling enough. As for the spicy art stuff, we got a lot of good pixelated art for your hungry eyes to feast on. We of course have CG of Lucia via the charm magic from Tentacle Play, self pleasuring, and of course, breeze fading. And then we also have the goods from the Dojinshis we collect which features various girls and even including the other succubus bosses. Now we move on to, in my personal opinion, the highlight of this game, the bosses, or how I would like to call them, the succubus rangers. Just Mio, these bosses do not play around. I don't know if it's my inadequacy of my gamer skills or the way these ladies are programmed, but I got whooped harder than my dad whooped me with the belt. You get the first red succubus ranger, which is one of the more easier ones. She either summons tentacles or fires in a three-way split like you, and rotates in a clockwise motion. The hardest part would be avoiding contact damage 
certain bullets from her because she and her bullets are faster than our F1 car. Then I also mentioned she has a shield. Next up is the green succubus ranger. Just me, yo, this green haired prick was a pain in my ass. What's so bad about this one? Horrendous unkillable ass that throws projectile every millisecond. I cannot concentrate on damaging her when I'm getting sniped by her skeleton from a thousand miles away because these skeletons have the most immaculate aiming and six sense ever. If you get cornered by her and her slaves, you're pretty much boned. The general strategy I had for this one was hide in the corner, wait for it to come up on the opposite side and then start blasting. Oh, and pray you didn't get bone zoned by the boneheads. And now I present the blue succubus ranger. Design wise, she's my favorite. As a boss, absolutely abhorrent. Her main methods of attacking are a shield like blast, a sonic wave that moves at the speed of light, and lastly, getting you in a traffic accident. Whichever action she wants to do is completely random and you barely have time to react to her light speed attacks. This one really tests your patience which I don't have so you can tell how much I struggled with this one. And then we have the purple succubus ranger. Similar to her red red sister, she has unkillable ads only this time it's herself probably because she's a narcissist. She and her clones attacks you with bullets to damage you or slow you down. Luckily you can light these torches up to stun her clones and figure out which is the real one. Ever so after she swaps with one one of her clones but if you keep lighting up the torches it should be one of the more easier bosses quote unquote it's less of a headache than the others but still a pain in my ass coming up next is the white succubus you piece of sh she's certainly the most annoying one of the bunch she has a shield that makes her invincible and the only way to remove it is pressing on these pedestals that shoots arrows from the back the problem is she moves from one spot to another like a neurodivergent oh and the skeletons are back Great! She also does a three-way attack. She's basically a worse version of her redhead sister. Lastly, you have the mommy succubus ranger, the final boss of the game. She's actually the easiest boss. Her attacks are easy to avoid once you know which one is coming. The hardest one to dodge would be the light speed sonic wave attack. She also summons adds, but at least you can actually kill them and they don't throw their bones at you. And after that, mommy succubus says, damn, she got hands and gives you your sub power back and then you're free to rain terror on every male on earth. Happily ever after, am I right? So if you're in the mood for some short pixelated fun, maybe try giving Tower of Succubus a try. Now, if you prefer a more adventure like Zelda-like, maybe this next game is for you. By the way, got milk? Sword of Succubus. Different from Tower of Succubus, it's more of an adventure where you traverse across place to place like all adventure games does. It starts off with our very well endowed protagonist getting assaulted in her sleep. But our poor victim was not aware his partner was a life sucking succubus and found out really fast by paying with his life. Now after she pillaged his holy sword, uh, I so the actual sword, not his penis. From his desecrated corpse and talking to the saintess, she says, Damn, oh well, I'm not too picky, you'll have to do. Now she has to be the one to save the Dark Lord and save the land, just because. The gameplay is pretty much the same as Tower of Succubus. Collect power-ups, beat bosses, and then collect the horny Triforce. You also have a plethora of NPCs to talk to, from getting side quests, shopping, and of course, prostitution. The bosses are relatively nicer than the ones on Tower of Succubus, except for one. <laughs> The last boss. My goodness, I have never felt so much frustration from an gay boss. So let me break down what makes this boss so abhorrent. First off, she is invincible to any of your attacks. The only way you can damage her is deflecting her red ball attack to her. But herein lies the problem. She does two other attacks other than that one. The other two being a light speed wave attack and another being a widespread lightning attack. She can just pretty much do those two attacks and trap you in a limbo bullshittery exclusively out of spite. Adding to that, the skeleton ads are back. I'm gonna have nightmares about this whenever I sleep, I swear to god. Even more than that is there would be acts of god to make the game lag even though I have the proper PC to run AAA games. And lastly, the arena. It's the most claustrophobic stage ever so you have limited space to dodge. It's a war of attrition that I spent an actual 2 hours on. With that said, let me show you an obligatory montage of me scrapping with this boss. Ah! Fucking hate this game. Jeez. Ah! Uh, no! What the chair? Uh, come on, man! Oh, that got heated up real quick, and not the good kind of heating up if you catch my drift. Let me cool down with some succubus milk.
didn't think I wouldn't talk about the erotic stuff, did you? The game's erotic art mostly focuses on breast milk. Apparently, succubus milk is a very hot commodity in this game's world. It's a holy elixir that will heal just about any injuries or illnesses. From drinking from the source directly, getting milk like a cow, and of course making an offer to evil gods that apparently treat you like their next door hint neighbor. I feel like this entire game is just one big advertisement for succubus milk. Do you ever need a boost of energy that's not caffeinated? Got any illnesses to get rid of? Or you might need more time on this earth of ours. Then try succubus milk. The Ambrosia of the Gods. Succubus milk is good for just about anything on one's daily life. You can drink it as the ultimate pre-workout. You can apply it on your skin for the smoothest skin care. And of course, it can also be the ultimate torture method. Succubus Milk, the Ambrosia of the Gods. Buy now at your local Kombini stores. Well, now that my thirst is quenched, let's move on to the last of the collection. Succubus Hunter, the first Metroidvania game developed by Liberheart. Without further delay, take it away, Yadomi. Now we started to get closer to the good stuff. Succubus Hunter, the first hentaivania of the series. This game's actually a DLC provided by the devs free of charge. It's like a complimentary dessert after the fine two-part meal. The game gives early Castlevania vibes, like very, very early. The game looks straight out of the Game Boy. It's a short and fun ride, only having 5 levels, 10 if you're counting the run back with a different character. You play as Olivia, who's in search of her little sister Sylvia, who got kidnapped to the lair of the succubus. Armed with whip in hand, she goes off to fend monsters while fighting her sister before it's too late. The collectible books makes the comeback, some of them telling in detail about the lore and past of the sisters and the succubus, although I only found one. Oops. You get your classic Metroidvania battle system, defeating your enemies with the power or BDSM or sub weapons. You have three kinds of sub weapons. You can shoot down enemies with a short sword or rain death from above with a sight. Let's not forget the boomerang that comes back. This one is the best for killing bosses, which, speaking of, the bosses are a breeze to fight, which honestly I really needed after that last boss from Sword of Succubus. The last boss being your sister that got turned into a succubus. I guess Olivia was just a tad bit late, huh? For the erotic parts of the game, you have your sister getting ravaged from the gentleman of the succubus lair as she slowly gets corrupted. So if you like that kind of stuff then maybe this game CG is for you. This concludes Succubus Hunter. I can only cover a game with like 5 stages alright? Don't hurt me. If you like a short and sleep hentai vein, I give Succubus Hunter a whirl. And that's pretty much it for the tower and sword of Succubus. They're a bit buggy and laggy at times even when you have a high-end computron. But all 3 games are a good bit of retro fun with excellent erotic pixel art. Lovely cultured 3 in 1 game pack we have. Moving on, now we have 2 games that has real meat in them. And not just the sausage kind. Take it away, other me. Midnight Castle Succubus. We're getting to the juicy goods now, ladies and gentlemen. It's the first game, as far as I know, that's a joint operation between Liberheart and Pixel Teishiku. Liberheart being in charge of the art while Pixel Teishiku takes care of the game programming. If Succubus Hunter is early era Castlevania, then Midnight Castle Succubus would be the middle area Castlevania. You play as a sole Succubus Hunter, off to an adventure to slay the Succubus, terrorizing a cursed city and abducting village girls. What a fantastic night for a curse! It's up to her to save the kidnapped girl and defeat the succubus. This game actually has a safe for work mode by the way. If you're a coward. What, too afraid to play a literal arrogant in front of dear old grandma? You have the basic game flame for a succubus hunter with more polish and quality of life. And now you have a more expansive world. So expansive, I had to pull a guide map because I'm very good at memorizing maps. <laughs> and even more content with newer weapons, newer skills, and of course, new weapons. You have more BDSM types now. There's the classic letter whip. Needs something stronger than letter whip. Who needs candles whip, which applies a dot to enemies. No need for treatment in the aftermath whip, which freezes enemies. And finally, Birthday Party Trick Whip, which launches magic missiles. Now, the funnest power-up, if you can call it that, would be gathering the gang. There's a, to there's a total of 3 gang members you can recruit in your adventure to form a squad. You start off with one slot, but as you get more HP, you get more slots. Gang member number 1, The Thief. Black Skin Beauty. Professional Knife Chower. Will most likely pickpocket you. Gang member number 2, The Shaman. Green haired goddess, healer, probably an eco terrorist. Gang member number three, the knight, blue haired tomboy prince, EI doe slashes, 
High probability of having a Virgil Ducky Makura. Gang member number 4, the Mage. Magic spells that slowest activation speed, literally Lisa from Genshin Impact. Now Uncle Ko, why is this the most fun power up you may ask? I don't know, something about watching the gang beat up on a boss is very cathartic while I just stand doing nothing. Something along those lines. And now we have the last power up, turning into a succubus. I mean, if you can't beat them, join them and maybe do some copulation together after. Now as a second we have a ranged default attack, higher jumps, the ability to swim and of course flying. Fighting boss is a lot more easier with this form since you have better mobility and faster attack animation. And of course for this game, Libra Heart also provides the finest pixel eye candy. Like these fine collection of boss design, from Undine and Harpies to Dark Elf and Necromancers. Lastly the erotic CG. Most of the art you unlock are true loading screens and game overs. The loading screen art features the village girls receiving a warm welcome from the locals at the dungeon. As for the game over screens, they feature both the succubus hunter and her succubus form. A fine variety of art for you fine ladies and gentlemen of culture. Overall, the game is a big improvement from succubus hunter with lots of content. I had a really good time exploring every nook and cranny to find collectibles in this one. Mucho recommended. Finally, we have the last of the batch. This one's the real breadwinner. Castle in Clouds, their most polished game yet. They definitely pulled out all the stars for this game. This is like the most video game arrow game I have ever played yet. Now, other me, if you please. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the magnum opus of Libra Heart and Pixel Teishiku so far. With the budget of Critical Bliss, the art of Libra Heart, and the game design of Pixel Teishiku, these three have brought the big guns for this game. I'm talking about big guns. Large assets if you will. Huge hunka dunka badanka should you feel so inclined. When I encountered this boss and jumped into her bountiful bosoms and they bounce. I knew I was gonna have a blast. Our lovely protagonist for this game is Lily the Bounty Hunter. We begin her story doing what a bounty hunter does best, chasing bounties. Her first bounty being of course mountain bandits. Unfortunately, it ended up failing in a very erotic fashion. Classic arrow gay situations, am I right? Now, you wonder what's the goal for Lily, her aim, her design. Could it be to end the threat of the legend of the sky castle? Or is it the thrill of adventure exploring unknown dangers? Nah, it's money. Monetary value, moolah, cold hard cash. Those limited edition Louis Vuitton bags aren't gonna buy themselves. This game is very much a symphony of night of the series. Fine controls of movement, level system, plenty of weapons, music that is a great jam, and of course plenty of mommies. Firstly, the level system. You got your usual RPG stats, you got strength that deals more damage, constitution more defense and HP, intelligence more magic power, agility faster attack speed, Luck increases your experience gain, and finally, plus self-explanatory. Now finally you have an assortment of weapons if your game's tired of all the BDS I mean. You get a sword, sight, axe, and magic wands with fire, ass, and homing magic. Sadly, these weapons can be a bit expensive. Now what's a good way to get moolah in this game? That's right ladies and gentlemen, good old prostitution. Laying in bed with these good gentlemen will earn you a pretty nickel. You will also learn such profound quotes from them such as Life is a beautiful thing, don't you think? I'm reflecting on the transience of life. Ah, I gotta find some work. Why do I feel so hollow after doing it? Yeah, why doesn't life ever turn out the way we want? Post not clarity is a hell of a thing. Anyways, the combat. The combat flows smoothly like procreation fluids. From the wall jumping, climbing, sprinting, and attack animation, Every woman just feels so natural and has little to no input delays. Fighting the bosses were a ton of fun too, with just the right amount of challenge. I had a lot of fun exploring the various maps in the game. Speaking of which, instead of one gigantic map, you have multiple stages to go through. Honestly, I find these various maps easier and less confusing to navigate than Midnight Succubus's large map in my opinion. Don't need to pull out a guide map for my ADHD brain to this game, eh? Moving on to the art design and aesthetics. This game's absolute pixel art heaven, made by the dev themselves. Not to say the previous games had bad art, they were beautiful in their own right, but the upgrade of Libra Hearts art in this game is absolutely stunning. It seems they started putting more funds on the proper assets of the game if you catch my drift. From Bandit, Onessa, Spooky Booby Ghost Lady, Octo Mommy, Cool Ice Mother, Spooky Pirate Big Sis, Big Dragon Milf, Slittery Slimy Snake Mama, Death with Double Ds, Wet Dream Succubus, and finally, 
Mommy, of course you have good quality aero content too. From tentacles, slimes, and my favorite, Sesbian Lex. The flesh on flesh action animation also got much more smoother framing too. Something about Lily's butt meat snapping against some other person's time meat is just a sight to behold. Overall, a great erotic experience and the most fun aero game I ever played yet. I really had a blast exploring every nook and cranny of different maps and had fun watching different people and creatures exploring every nook and cranny of Lily. I give it my stamp of culture. And that's our wrap up of this collection of cultured games. If you're in need of pixelated goodness featuring succubus, give these games a try. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got a cursed tattoo to get rid of. Okay, there. Done. Are you satisfied? That was a very cringe and scuff video. I love it. Can you remove this tattoo now, please? Oh yeah, I got you fam. Thank you. Oh, finally, I can get some sleep. Well, what if I put it back again? Oh yeah, by the way, I put a curse on you that if you put a curse on someone else, uh, you, you'll die. So yeah. Uh... Well, with that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys later on the next video. Good night, ladies and gentlemen of culture. When I'm gone, you'll be sorry. When I'm gone, you'll be sorry. When I'm gone, you'll be sorry. You'll be sorry when I'm gone.